Hello there and welcome to episode 9 of AK Interactive's basic weathering series. Now this is the final episode and this is where we finally get to do those nice final little touches, those little added extras that just livens up um, the model that little bit more. Um, now there's not much to do on our Land Rover here, our desert um, theatre of war. Uh, for this we're just going to add um, some engine oil. Right. This is AK Interactive's AK084 engine oil. Um, got to give it a good, good shake. Right. And this product is good for making um, the, the, the illusion of, of, of engine oil. Now it is important because um, these last little touches do give off a different sort of shine. So um, our models here have had um, a matte coat whacked all over it hopefully as you can see here as well from the whip it it's all nice and matte um but with these engine oils and all this other stuff that we're going to throw on here there is a bit of a gloss to it um, and that gives it its effect as well so you don't want to be doing this before you do that final matte stage because you're just going to mattify um, this engine oil which will then lose its effect a bit so this is a right at the end sort of job to do um, so let's bring you in on our wheels here um, let's just prop it up with something as well just at the back here we've got our our wheel all right and what we're going to do just going to open up our engine oil going to get out a, a nice paintbrush that's got a good point to it uh, i'm using the double zero by windsor and newton and all we've got to do is just dip in to our engine oil uh, our engine oil and we just sort of like you know just here and there just paint on a little bit maybe round some bolts right maybe even sort of get it to um, go in a direction right so just like this we sort of get it to look like it's sort of being I don't know leaking from the the hub cap here and then it sort of just drains to one side and maybe just builds up and pulls up say just there like so hopefully as you can see that just there just to maybe show you that again we can sort of just paint a line from the center right going out to the edge and sort of getting a bit bigger and thicker as it reaches the edge and sort of pulls up Hopefully as you just see in there, it just adds that nice little bit of an extra. And as you can see, there is a little bit of a shine to it, which is sort of the shine, um, the sort of wet um, engine oil that's going on there just to sort of um, give you that effect as well, which is why we want to make sure we do our matte coats first. Um, on our whippet here, we can do a little bit more, right? This is our engine section here, which is potentially going to get all sorts of, um, you know built up oil and everything uh you know the crew are potentially getting in here and there uh, maybe topping it up with oil that sort of thing um so to sort of represent that um what i've got here i've got some um pc o-rings these are really cool for you know a few things like doing um three four bombs and whatnot um but for what we're going to use here it's also good for representing say the crew are like coming along with say a a bottle of oil or a, or something like that and they put it down on the hull and it leaves that sort of a ring and that's what this is good for All right so we're just going to get out uh um engine oil here and just getting our o-ring right we're just going to dip it onto the lid right so just underneath there it's got a nice bit of our engine oil on there you do sort of want to maybe just dab it off a little bit you don't want it to be too strong right 
And then what we're going to do, we're going to come back to the model and we're just going to sort of place it down somewhere and sort of leave an imprint. Although well, that wasn't wet enough, but you don't want it to be too wet. All right, so let's try that again. Maybe bring you in a little bit closer as well. We're just going to dot that down and sort of leave that imprint. But hopefully, as you can see there, we've got that nice little circular imprint. Maybe sort of put another one on there. Or a slight another one. Maybe picking up and putting it down. And there we go. We've got that sort of imprint going on there and then to enhance that a little bit more what we're going to do uh, just getting out a palette we're going to make up a little bit of a mixture um, we're going to take our engine oil we're going to take some odorless thinners and what we're going to do we're going to thin this down a bit so um, we just want maybe like a 50 50 mixture right just to make it that little bit thinner because it is a little bit on the strong side to start with and what we want to do is around the area in which we've just made that ring to represent like a a, a, a bottle of oil or something going onto the onto the engine section we're just going to sort of dab on some little spots of it you know they've sort of spilt it a little bit all right, and we're just sort of dabbing it on little tiny little dots, you know, sort of like a big build up of it, but then there's like little tiny little spots of it as well. All right, just to represent a little bit of spillage. All right, but that's sort of like the weak. We've we've weakened that down. We've really sort of let that um, sort of. Um, you know look weak so we say um, we can sort of make that a little bit more thick you can as well if you want to make it a bit more um, sort of try and give it a bit of a ringness to it um, you'll see what I mean in, when I do it getting our odorless thinners we're just gonna dip into our odorless thinners right just pure thinners and in the middle where we've got all this going on we can then dab that on Right, so then that's going to sort of thin it out, but it's got this capillary action where it's sort of, when it dries, it'll have this sort of um, rings around all the edges going on there just to sort of um, show, if you ever look at like spilt oil, you'll have like sort of like rings going around the edges and then you'll have uh, more sort of concentrated areas of oil and weaker concentrations of oil. Um, you know, and that's what we're trying to represent it. But before we add some sort of stronger concentrations of oil, we want to let that um, now dry. Next up, while that's uh, our engine oil's drying, um, we have fuel stains here as well by AK Interactive, which is AK025. Uh, now you can apply this in exactly the same way as we just applied the engine oil. However, there is different ways in which we can apply this and sort of get the same effect. So I'm going to show you both. Um, what we can do is we can start by adding um, plain simple uh, odorless thinners and right here I'm kind of guessing I'm, I'm, I'm probably a bit inaccurate here but I'm guessing this is maybe the fuel cap but I'm just as you can see I'm just applying odorless thinners only to the surface I'm dotting it around right and then I'm gonna come in with our fuel stains and the whole idea is, while this is still wet, when we sort of touch this, right, it's sort of going to flow with the odorless thinners that's already down on the surface here. Right, to sort of give us the same effect but in a different sort of way. Right, and I'm just dabbing it, you want to have it in little spots and and stuff like that to sort of represent little drops and drips. Right, and if you want to sort of thin it out again a little bit more, you can come in with dipping into the old odorless thinners. And again, you can just dip and dab 
at here so that it spreads out and it'll sort of make a ring around the edge and the whole idea is this is going to sort of give this a little bit of a um, a very random look you can even if you feel like it you know maybe get a little bit of it and sort of streak it down you know just streak it down the back here sort of represents some of it sort of streaking off the back all right and hopefully as you can see there you know we've got that sort of nicely you know showing that stain put a couple of little drip um, spots just here maybe and there we go we then need to let that dry and then we'll apply sort of like a thicker um, thicker solution of the, the fuel stains and the engine oil Right, so now that has had time to dry, hopefully what you're seeing here is we've, um, we've got, especially here where the carousel, well, the, the fuel stains are, you can sort of hopefully see we've got these rings going on, uh, which is sort of representing that. So coming back with a fuel stain, only this time we're coming in neat. We're not thinning it down or adding any odorless thinners or, or anything like that. And what we're gonna do is right where you know we've got our little rings and all this kind of stuff we're just gonna dab this in neat to sort of represent that we've got you know some fresh sort of new fuel stains all right a couple of little spots just tap it with a the tip of the paintbrush and there you go you know we've got some nice fresh fuel stains and that should um dry down it will it won't as you can see it's sort of gone down wet but it will dry sort of glossy but it won't look that glossy um, and the same goes for uh, engine oil we can sort of get that out and we can do the same again you know sort of you know inside where we've got maybe the bigger concentrations or something and we can just add fresh little dots here and there just like so I did put some over here somewhere and the whole idea is is to sort of you know build it up with lots of sort of um, layers on top of layers having thinner layers having 100% um, of it maybe put in you know more than one coat on and all these different layers will give us that sort of look of having like spilt oil there spilt petrol just at the back of here um, and that sorts out having fuel stains and oil stains and that kind of stuff um, you know just try and keep them in places where you would get oil stains and all these kind of things um, don't just blast everywhere it is that one lot of like little final touch in a little place here and there now the next effect we're going to be doing now is another cool effect it's called wet effects Actually, before we move on to wet effects, I've just forgotten. Actually, what you want to do is we've got these, um, these are like metallic silver pens. Um, you can get them from pretty much any sort of online shop um, that does these. These are really, really cool. It's, it's basically um, a, a silver crayon. And what we want to do is right where we've got all our um, tracks here, where we've got the most sort of raised edge, you know using the side just the side of our sort of crane here right we can just give it that little bit of a rub and it's sort of just representing um, you know that nice bit of metal sort of coming through you know freshly sort of you know not rusted or anything like that it's been freshly sort of um, worn by just you know simple moving along and we can give all the tracks that little bit of a touch and it'll just add that extra little effect I uh, try not to sort of um, color in um, the thicker muds because obviously it's you know thicker mud sort of anything that's sort of raised can get that little bit uh, of silver going on in there hopefully as you're just seeing it just gives it that nice bit of a metallic look 
So hopefully you like that nice bit of metallic silver um, crane on there, that just gives it that nice look. You can get away with using uh, a normal uh, pencil if you want to do that. But now we come to the wet effects. I do like the wet effects because it's quite easy and very effective. Um, nice product here by AK. Um, we just dip a, 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 a paintbrush in there and all we do is, you know, we've got some tracks here and all we've got to do is maybe just where you're going to get that moisture just dab it on right in between the tracks that sort of area more so in the middle and the cool thing is because we've got this um, cool texture on here with all the pigments it really does just suck right in change the color of the pigments to look like a wet effect um, and look like wet wet mud um, plus it's got a really good um, bit of capillary action going on as well so um, it will flow like water and sort of give you that sort of flowed water sort of look to it let's just add a little bit more just here All right, and you can also just sort of get it to go in sort of like a um, with gravity sort of streak it out as well if you if you want to but hopefully as you can see there I mean that is looking quite cool it does go on looking very shiny and wet but as you can see it will sort of start to dry in a more sort of wet type look um, maybe I could sort of show you say at the back here we've got some stuff going on at the back here maybe we could um, uh, get out a more smart um, pointy a small paintbrush and sort of do some streaking you know just sort of streak the wet effect and sort of have it sort of pulling up down the bottom get a bit more on my paintbrush let's get it sort of pulling up down the bottom and then having a couple of streaks maybe coming off the bolts and stuff I don't know if as you can see there it makes it look rather sort of cool and wet effect I don't know if you can see those streaks that too well um, however you could do them um, we've got our tracks here as well we can you know do some nice sort of dabs here as well maybe a bit of a, a bigger paintbrush just to sort of show you know gravity you got the um, more wetter damper sort of mud at the bottom and maybe um, you know any sort of raised detail again you know we can just dab a bit around the area around the recesses of it and then maybe sort of streak some of it down right just show you a bit of a streak in this down Hopefully, I'm just seeing that on camera. I don't know why you're seeing it. It's a nice little sort of effect. There we go. Streak some of that down. Hopefully, you're just seeing that there. Um, yeah, it is. It is. A, it is a cool effect. It's a nice light effect, um, and it does look a little bit different as it dries. Let's bring you back to the tracks. As you can see, they've slowly dried. It's sort of. Um, shall we say it's sort of lost its shine but it's sort of made the pigments look a little bit darker so this is where you know a second coat is not going to hurt at all right just to sort of you know the more coats you put on basically the more wetter it looks the more sort of it has a bit of a shine um, to it afterwards to sort of uh, make it look even wetter and wetter so the more you apply the wetter it looks and the wetter it looks uh, which is rather cool about this product um, so really all I've got to do now is sort of go all the way around this of this model here our Land Rover here is done. I mean, there's there's no point putting wet effects on a Land Rover. It's in the desert. There's no need for any sort of um, Wet effects going on there. So I'm just going to finish this and we are all done so there we go there is the end result to our whip it we've got all those last little bits of wet effects on there hopefully as you can see there it's giving it that sort of wet type look the tracks have got that um, damp 
um, damp, muddy, wet, muddy sort of look to it as well as dry mud going on in there. So it really does um, give a lot of flavour to put on those last final little um, little techniques there, those, you know, and, and the oil and, and all that kind of stuff. Really cool last effects just to, to, to give that, that last little touch. Now, sadly, we've come to the end of this um, basic weathering series by AK Interactive. Um, I've quite enjoyed it. I'm hoping you guys have learned a lot from it. These are all the basic foundation steps um, to produce a really nicely weathered model. Um, if we go back to the whole modulation thing where, um, hopefully as you can see here, the whip it, it's got that modulation effect. It, as you can see, it livens it up. You've got you know quite a lot of nice, you can see the highlights on there. Um, although we didn't do it with the Land Rover, um, it's a good way to sort of show you the difference and um, you know, by still putting all those different weathering effects down, I mean, we've still got quite a nice looking model there. Um, and it was quite nice to show you the different theaters of war with desert and World War II one um, trench warfare. Um, so again, sadly we've come to the end of the show and hopefully you've enjoyed all of this. Um, if you want to see any more videos, go to Genesis Models website. There is absolutely hundreds and hundreds of videos um, on doing aircraft, armour, miniatures, the whole... Um, all sorts of different things, bo inbox reviews and, and, and that kind of stuff. So um, go check out that if you want to um, see some more videos. As for the future, um, at some point I'm probably I'm going to be doing some more advanced sort of techniques with armor. Um, but again, I'll be sh it's mainly aircraft to do with Genesis models, to be honest with you. Um, but there are so many things that um, in armor that can be transferred over into aircraft and vice versa. So the techniques are all sort of um, the same and they can sort of mix and match between the two different um, types of aircraft and armor. So um, yeah, hopefully you've enjoyed um, this whole tutorial series on AK Interactive products. So until next time, my name is Bob Waldron, this is Genesis Models, and I hope you've enjoyed.